start deriving the Hooke's law. If you look at the first uh, bullet, it lists all the assumptions we have discussed so far. Okay. It summarizes all the assumptions we have discussed so far. So, when I say Hooke's law, it is valid only under these assumptions. That is why we discussed when we talk of a relationship between stress and strain, then assumptions have to be discussed. Hooke's law is such a relationship and so this limits the scope of Hooke's law. Okay. So, what are the assumptions? Homogeneous properties are the same at any point. Now, we know what properties are. We have seen looked at three material properties, Young's modulus, shear modulus, Poisson ratio. Isotropic at a point, material properties are same in all directions and linear elastic okay, solid. Elastic, a definite relationship between stress and strain. When I say stress and strain, applies both for normal stress, shear stress and then normal strain, shear strain. Okay. And uh, linear tells you the relationship between them, between the stress and strain is linear. Okay. Okay. And what we do is we consider a body subjected to a general three dimensional stress. What do I mean by that? I have a body subjected to normal stress along x, dire x direction and y direction and z direction. Okay. Now, to for easy discussion, we will consider a <coughs> two dimensional case and that is what is shown here. We have a, a plate in the undeformed configuration before the uh, force is being applied, before the stress is being applied and uh, <coughs> the length of the sides are delta x and, and delta y. And the first figure what is shown is it is subjected to normal stress along x direction tau x x tau x x and it is shown to be ten, tensile here. Now, the changed length or the changed length of the sides are also shown 1 plus epsilon x x into delta x and the length of along the y direction has changed to 1 plus epsilon y y into delta y. Okay. For this uh, condition, there is elongation along the x axis. So, epsilon x x is greater than 0, there is contraction along the y axis. So, epsilon y y is less than 0. Now, what is shown in the uh, second diagram is the same plate okay, subjected to normal stress along y direction please note the point, we are subjecting the plate to both uh, normal stress along x direction and normal stress along y direction. Okay. And so, what is shown here is second figure shows the plate subjected to normal stress along y direction. Now, there is elongation along the y direction. So, the original length along y direction is delta y the new length increased length is 1 plus epsilon y y into delta y. Now, there is contraction along x axis which is the perpendicular direction and the original length is delta x and the new length is 1 plus epsilon x into delta x. So, for this condition epsilon y y is greater than 0 elongation along y axis and contraction along x axis. So, epsilon x axis less than 0. Now, what is it the third figure represents? We are applying both the normal stresses together okay. that is what is shown here tau x x and then tau y y. We are applying both the uh, tensile stresses together. The first figure shows the plate subjected to normal stress along x axis. Second figure shows normal stress uh, along y direction third represents the <coughs> plate subjected to normal stress along x direction and y direction. Now, 
if you let us say there is uh, no normal stress along y direction momentarily let us take there is no normal stress along y direction then because of normal stress along x direction what would be the normal strain along x direction it is given by tau x x by e that is this 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 length tau x x by e this would have been the let us say increase in length along x direction if the uh, two dimension element has been subjected to normal stress along x direction only. But because there is normal stress along y direction there is some decrease in length along the x direction there is some nor, uh, negative or contraction along the x direction what is that value how do you find out that ok for the normal stress along y direction the relationship between connecting tau y y and epsilon y y is given by this equation just like we had seen earlier for x direction. So, this relationship relates normal st stress along y direction to normal strain along y direction by the Young's modulus. Remember once again we have taken the same Young's modulus independent of direction because it is isotropic. I write that relationship for normal strain along y direction epsilon y y is equal to tau y y by e. Now, my direction of stress is along y direction. So, x becomes the perpendicular direction. So, how do we write normal strain along the, the perpendicular direction is minus nu times normal strain along the direction of stress. So, when we substitute for epsilon y y in terms of tau y y by e we get the expression for normal strain along x direction due to normal stress along y direction is that ok. So, of course, this is to be a negative there is a decrease in length which is minus nu times tau y y by e. So, this this contraction is nu tau y y by e ok. If there were no normal stress along y direction this would have been the increase in length, but because there is normal stress along y direction there is some contraction. So, the net the net increase in length is only so much that is what is shown here ok. The total is shown here tau x x by e and the contraction because of tau y y is shown here the net is shown here ok. So, in terms of equation that is shown geometrically in terms of equation the let us call the effective normal strain along x direction is equal to tau x x by e if there were no normal stress along y direction only this would be the value, but because you had normal stress along y direction it caused a contraction along the x direction which is minus nu tau y y by e and so this two terms put together is the net normal strain along the x direction due to tau x x and tau y y is it ok. The first term represents contribution from tau x x which is let us say along L which is elongation second term tells a contribution because of tau y y which is contraction and if you sum together you get the net normal strain ok. So, what is that we have done we have considered a body subjected to all the three normal stresses for the present case we have considered only a two dimensional case subjected to only tau x x and tau y y and seen wha how what is the uh, normal strain along x direction. Okay. Now, let us uh, based on this let us uh, discuss this table what this uh, table shows is that uh, the column headings are the stresses the normal stresses along x direction y the direction z direction. What are the uh, row headings? the normal strain along x direction, y direction and z direction. Let us take the first column ok. What is the first column? The direction of stress is x along the x axis, direction of strain epsilon x axis along the same x axis. How are they related? By simply tau x x by e. Now, for when the stress is along x direction y and z are the perpendicular directions. How are they related? Minus nu times the epsilon x x value that is why you have minus nu 
into epsilon x x which is tau x x by e. Similarly, the, the strain along the z direction which another perpendicular direction is minus nu times epsilon x x which is tau x x by e. So, what is the significance of the entries in the first column? You applied a normal stress along x direction and the three rows represent normal strain along x direction, normal strain along y direction and normal strain along z direction. This is what we have seen in the slide pre previous to the uh, uh, earlier slide. Okay. Similarly, if you apply normal stress along y direction, the normal strain along y direction is tau y y by e because it is in the same direction as the stress. Now, the perpendicular directions are x and then z. How do you represent minus nu into epsilon y y? What is epsilon y y? Tau y y by e. Similarly, for the z direction minus nu into epsilon y y which is tau y y by e. Similarly, you can write for the case where you apply normal stress along z direction. Now, let us analyze a particular row. What you have seen is column wise. Let us analyze one particular row. Let us take the first row. Okay. Now, what is significance of the first row? It says normal strain uh, uh, as the row heading. It tells the contribution to normal strain because of normal stress in x direction, normal stress in y direction, normal stress in z direction. And this is what we have seen in the previous slide and that is what is shown here. We have seen the first two terms here. Look at the first row. In the first row, the first column entry is tau x x by e. Second column entry is minus nu tau y y by e. And because it is three dimensional case, you have one more entry minus nu tau z z by e. Okay. The significance of the different terms in the first row are contribution to normal strain along x direction because of normal stress in x direction, normal stress in y direction, normal stress in z direction. Okay. So, and if you now if you sum up all of them, you get the normal strain in x direction because of normal stresses in x, y and z direction that is the significance. That is what we have seen in the previous slide considering only x, x and y, y this table of course, generalizes for z, z also. Okay. So, what is this, this table about? We can discuss both column wise and row wise. The entries in the column are the effect of stress in one direction on strain in three directions. If you consider row wise, it is effect of stress in three directions on strain in one direction. Okay. Okay. So, similarly you can discuss for epsilon y y and epsilon z z. Okay. Because all the relationships are linear, we just superimpose the effects of the three normal stresses. Okay. What we have written first column is because of normal stress in x direction, second because of normal stress in y direction, similarly normal stress in z direction. And each, each individually tells you what is the normal strain in the x direction. Now, we are just going to add when is it possible because they are linear relationship and that is why we are able to just add them or more formally we can say superimpose. Okay. So, that is why since all relations are linear superimpose effects of tau x x, tau y y, tau z z that is the meaning of this addition n i epsilon x x this epsilon x x represents the normal strain taking into account effect of tau x x, tau y y and tau z z all three normal stresses are effect of all three normal stresses are taken into account and this addition is possible or superposition is possible because the relationships are linear. Now, um, so what I have done is added the first uh, added the entries in the first uh, row tau x x by e and then minus nu into tau y y by e and then minus nu tau z z by e. Okay. When you look at that expression what should come to your mind? the way in or the way in which it we should interpret that is the first term represents the effect of effect on normal strain 
due to normal stress in the same direction. Other two the effect on normal strain because of normal stress in the two other perpendicular directions okay. that is what you should understand. Okay. So, the effect of normal stress in all three directions are brought into this equation okay, or summed up in this equation. Okay, of course, 1 by e is common you can write this expression for epsilon x x as 1 by e and then tau x x minus nu into tau y y plus tau z z. Okay. Similarly, you can write for other uh, directions as well which means I am summing up the entries in the second row and summing up entries in the third row as well. So, second row tells the normal strain in y direction because of once again three normal stresses and third row tells normal strain in z direction because of normal stress in three directions. Okay. Okay. So, far we discuss about normal strain. So, now, let us discuss about uh, uh, shear strain. Shear strain we introduced uh, the shear modulus based on the linear relationship between tau x y and gamma x y. We said the tau x y versus gamma x y is linear and the proportionality constant is shear modulus. Same expression is written, but for shear strain we have the previous slide we just wrote expressions for the normal strain. Now, we are going to write expressions for the shear strain. So, the shear strain in the x y plane gamma x y is equal to tau x y by g. Now, Remember we discussed about uh, the strain tensor where the components were epsilon x x epsilon y y and then epsilon x y was the component of the strain tensor. So, we can write an expression for epsilon x y which is the component of strain tensor. We have seen that epsilon x y is gamma x y by 2. So, epsilon x y is equal to tau x y by 2 g. Okay. Remember the graph is between tau x y and gamma x y not epsilon x y. Please pay attention to that. It is tau x y and gamma x y and not epsilon x y. Why is that? What you experimentally measure is gamma x y not epsilon x y. Okay. So, the g connects tau x y and gamma x y and not tau x y and epsilon x y. Okay why epsilon x y why are we interested in epsilon x y because that is the component which appears in the strain tensor and epsilon x y is related to epsilon x y is related to gamma x y as as epsilon x y is equal to gamma x y by 2 okay so we can relate gamma x y and tau x y also which is tau x y by 2 g okay. similarly we can write expressions for gamma y z as tau y z by g. You can write expression for epsilon y z also as tau y z by 2 g. Similarly, for gamma z x also. Okay. Now, we should note uh, one difference between the way in which we wrote normal strains and then shear strain. Okay. Now, when we have an expression for epsilon x x okay, on the right hand side we took into effect of tau x x, tau y y and tau z z. Okay. So, normal stresses acting on x along x direction, y direction, z direction had effect on normal strain along x direction, but now look at the expression for shear strain gamma x y is written to be depending only on tau x y not on tau y z or tau z x. Okay. So, one quick uh, rough way of understanding is that we have a plate you apply a uh, uh, shearing stress the change in angle depends on the this shear stress alone. This shear strain along x y plane is not going to depend on shear stress uh, along uh, y z plane and z x plane. So, that, that way these relationships are I would say simpler com compared to the normal uh, compared to the relationships for normal strain. They just depend on the shear stress in that plane only. Okay. Okay. So, any shear strain component is proportional to only corresponding 
shear stress component okay, and independent of normal stress components also. We have not even considered uh, the effect of normal stress also. Okay. So, any shear strain component let us say gamma x y is proportional to only corresponding shear stress component which is tau x y and independent of normal stress components. We have not considered dependency of gamma x y on let us say tau x x, tau y y, tau z z. We are taking gamma x y to depend only on tau x y only. Mm, that way these relationships are st like a stand alone relationship straight away you can get shear strain in terms of shear stress and later on express shear stress in terms of shear strain also okay so those are the uh, stress tensor and the uh, strain tensor oh, st so those are the assumptions which i have discussed homogeneous isotropic linear elastic solid we can now summarize all the relationships which I have discussed so far for normal strain and shear strain. Okay. So, we have seen this expression for normal strain along x axis. Analogously, we can write an expression for normal strain along y axis. Similarly, normal strain along z axis and uh, you can also write expression for shear strain epsilon x y epsilon y z and then epsilon z x. Okay. So, what is that we have done? We have written relationships for the diagonal components of strain tensor epsilon x x epsilon y y epsilon z z the normal strains. We have also written expression for the three off diagonal uh, strain tensor components namely epsilon uh, x y. We also written expression for the uh, off diagonal elements namely epsilon x y, epsilon y z and then epsilon z x. Okay. So, how did we write? We wrote them in terms of the components of the stress tensor. Okay. Okay. So, six scalar relations okay, between 6 independent stress and strain components. Remember we discussed uh, the stress tensor as 9 components, but only 6 are independent. Similarly, for the strain tensor there are 9 components, but only 6 are independent epsilon x y is equal to epsilon y x. We have not even shown epsilon y x here, because we have taken epsilon y x to be equal to epsilon x y. So, 6 independent stress tensor components. 6 independent strain tensor components and there are 6 scalar relations between the 6 independent stress and strain components and that is the 3 dimensional form of Hooke's law. Where is the Hooke's law known to you? That is here epsilon x x is equal to tau x x by E. That is where what we already know very well known to us is one simplified form of what we have discussed so far. Okay. We have really discussed a more general form of Hooke's law, a three dimensional was version of Hooke's law. Even what we have discussed is under this assumption homogeneous, isotropic, linear, elastic. Okay. What we already know very well known to us mo most of us is the Hooke's law given by epsilon x x is equal to 1 by e tau x x. What we have seen is a more generic version which is applicable for a three dimensional case. Okay. And remember the Hooke's law is written for epsilon x y and not for gamma x y. Why is it? Because epsilon x y is the component of the strain tensor not gamma x y. Okay. I have not written for gamma x y is equal to tau x y by g. I have written as epsilon x y equal to tau x y by 2 g. The reason is I am we are writing expressions for components of strain tensor in terms of components of stress tensor. Okay. That is why, but the original experimentation is between tau x y and gamma x y, okay. because that is from experiment. We measure straight away change in angle. Okay. That is why the x axis there is gamma x y, but we need relationship for epsilon x y. Okay. That has to be uh, kept in mind.
okay now let's summarize all the uh, equations here which i have listed in the previous slide the left hand side shows expressions for the normal uh, strains and the right hand side shows expressions for the um, shear strains okay now if you look at the equations and even if you look at the way in which you are discussed there are three material properties what are they the young's modulus e and then the shear modulus g the poisson ratio okay. there are three material properties okay. but only two of them are independent one depends on the other one of them depends on the other you cannot there cannot be three independent material properties we can show that there is a relationship between e nu and g resulting in only two independent material properties okay and uh, that's our uh, next uh, objective what is the relationship between the three material properties okay so we'll derive the relationship between three metal properties because the hooke's law uh, under these assumptions can have only two independent material properties okay. Okay. so we are proceeding towards deriving a relationship between eg and nu